Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye. How many of you are being blessed and changed by Koinonia in all sincerity? The day we stop ministering the word to you, God has a right to seize ministry from us because from that time we become showmen and actors on stage hallelujah let me show you something Ephesians chapter 2 I hope that one day when you become a pastor look at me when you become a pastor in future and you make slavery out of your members we will call you and we'll ask you where you learned it from hallelujah the reason why we are careful with our lives many times is so that we do not sow the seed of bondage and corruption in the hearts of many people and so we allow death to walk in us so that life will walk in you hallelujah paul said follow me as i follow after christ run away from all this wrong concept of ministry and concept of glory where you dominate your fellow man in a bit to show you are great the greatest in the kingdom is a servant humility is a revelation it's not an act there is a revelation that keeps you in that state hallelujah away with that ambition of lording it over people and have i fear people that serve me i've said this thing for years till today i'm not able to call people sons and daughters because i know how of much of a baby i am in the presence of god so what is the extent of grace that will make me call someone a son or a daughter and I run away from these kinds of things because I know that anybody that assumes a position of honor will be judged even more make sure your priorities are defined about life about leadership about ministry kill away the wrong mindsets that we have received where you lord it over people that's not the way of the spirit when the spirit of god finds expression in the life of a man if all you have to show for your yieldedness is that you can blow and people fall down you are still a baby in the spirit hallelujah we must be built and be mature men of character men of grace men of humility hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord all right let me have um please as i make these calls if you belong to this category just run out quickly i will embarrass you let me have someone that knows god is calling him in the place of ministry just one person one god is calling you in the place of music come out quickly as i'm calling just if you are bold and you are confident if you are thinking about it just remain there one person you are what music do you sing but in your other shirt you should leave only one dress properly hallelujah what of you music hold on i just need come i'm not praying we are doing something How? okay um music all of you okay don't worry just just go back to your seat appreciate them please i just need one person music mm. okay let's have two of you 
someone in fashion and design fashion and design quickly who will make sure it's what you are doing not dreaming about yet at least that you have a seed on ground and make sure when you come out here you dress properly don't dress like a hooligan dress like a leader right don't come out with with comb in your pocket and you're laughing no you dress like you know where you are going don't look like a foolish person it's touts that look like that hallelujah you comb your hair you look smart you look like where you are going don't dress like a thief that's why they keep stopping you on the road hallelujah all right let's have someone in education education someone who is education anybody you know god is calling in the area of education please appreciate them as they come someone in family life you know you have a passion family life who is that education family life who is represent okay i will too appreciate her someone in politics and governance you know that there is grace for you in that area make sure you know what you are standing for if you are not sure please go back to your seat hallelujah please come up and face the congregation all of you uh someone in arts and entertainment fashion you're a beauty you are a beauty uh what do we call it makeup artist beautician where are you oh she looks it no problem just come up you're a pastor why are you laughing you people always think come on pastor beautiful one more person come on celebrate her i like people who are bold and confident hallelujah all right so just group yourself fashion beauty this side next music next your what decoration education two of you beautiful please stand family life politics and governance hallelujah all of you are 10 coin on here right hallelujah okay um sweetheart come Now, you are a pastor walking in grace. You've attended our miracle services, right? And you've seen the grace of God. And as a Christian who has been built, you have the opportunity to talk in a bereavement. Now, you walk in miracles. You walk in signs and wonders, but a family has lost their loved one. And they just push you as you are now. All right with the knowledge of what we have been training the building and everything how would you approach how would you communicate the light of christ and comfort the family make your mistakes don't be afraid this is a training ground nobody i assure you listen nobody will look at you and speak whatever you can i'm comforting you here i'm standing by your side okay all right go ahead praise the lord praise the living god are there living souls here Praise, praise, praise the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, to me, I'll go to such family because, you know, life without Jesus, if that family are not from, are not maybe, let me say, they don't know much about Christ. Because you cannot just go into a family and just start, you understand. If they don't know about Christ, you first preach Christ to them. Praise the Lord. And also, you cannot do it by your own power. You need God. Praise the living God. Before you go and meet any family, you need to go on your knees. Not only on your knees, you need to go to God. God, I want to go to that family. What do you want me to say? How do you want me to comfort them? Praise the living God. Hallelujah. And with the help of God, you see that God will give you words to say. Praise God. God bless you. Come on, please appreciate her. Yes, we are proud of you. You are learning very well. Hallelujah. That's the life of a minister. You never do things without the leadership of the Holy Spirit. That's all I was looking for. This is what we are teaching you. Are you following me now? How many of you like Koinonia 101? 
no carryover no carryover whatsoever hallelujah so that you'll be established when you step out you should know that you have been trained when you graduate from AB, you behave like an abusite and you know you are smart you cannot graduate from abu and behave as if you did not go to school hallelujah so when you are going to a buried family you don't just go arrogantly and go and meet them and say do you know that we attend miracle service and we are all these kind of things you are behaving like a child here if you don't know what to say what do you do keep quiet there is wisdom in silence i told you to read the book of proverbs the moment you are in the midst of people especially elderly people and you don't know what to say shut your mouth that's what elihu did until wisdom came unto him hallelujah politics and governance come sir we live in a very corrupt country hallelujah where every tom dick and harry has access to a part of the national treasury anybody can loot hallelujah and now you become the chairman of a local government there's subvention there's allocation yeah? there's there's everything for you and now we have taught you to represent christ assuming you have to address your leaders christians muslims buddhists free thinkers wicked people demons all kinds of people and now you are supposed to communicate the life of christ you have been receiving the teachings here listen if you cannot translate the word that you are receiving here into a practical reality we have been wasting our time hallelujah go ahead sir feel free to express yourself praise god two minutes in a country like nigeria where there is high level of incubation of um, corruption i as one pardon the whole um, pattern of um, bureaucracy and so on and so forth but there's a need for strategic planning. We saw that in the life of Jesus Christ where he was able to coordinate his disciples in assigning um, respective assignments to them um, all around, you know? And in the same regard, you being able to contend with um, society is another aspect which you need to put into consideration, which Jesus Christ continually was um, faced with um, challenges from the Sadducees and the Pharisees. But consistently, the application of wisdom, which of course didn't just come um, naturally, but he prayed, and actually wisdom was then granted unto him. He was commissioned into his assignment, and so the same will I do. Amen. Okay, so you have not told us what you are going to tell them. So, assuming you are addressing a group of people, what give us one solution that can help to bring good governance in this country we are tired of nonsense speak to us good governance is a active role in key participation everybody has um based on the from a kingdom perspective not social studies all right from a kingdom perspective participation one major aspect which we need to do is actually not looking at the importance of any office but actually operating with a mindset of humility you just said not quite long ago humility is a revelation it is not um an understanding amen hallelujah and so as a christian when you go into public office it's not for you the waiting day for you have a chop they have they have chopped their own no as a christian you must go with the attitude of servanthood your blessing is tied to the operation of the economy of the kingdom not in looting from the treasury hallelujah and you face a lot of challenges because there are people above you but you must refuse to compromise don't go and steal money and come and lie to us in the church and carry small and say joshua selman this is for you to go on air we will drive you away with it that's why we are believing the word of god for ourselves hallelujah so when we vote you sir make sure you represent christ now i can talk to you but when you get there when you forget one night you will dream of koinonia and you will dream of this warning god will threaten you and say mr man he will do to you what he did to adeboe the day you mess up i will erase you from the ground we are proud of you go and represent the kingdom family life <laughs> hallelujah marriage right now is a union between two things anything a man and a whale a fish and 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 and, and 
than anything a man and a baby i've said it again if you are considering marriage it is paramount that the partner you are thinking about must be of the opposite sex hallelujah it's amazing that the senate in nigeria can be debating gay marriage a man and a man a woman and a woman we call it human rights and that westernization and that nonsense is creeping through films is there anybody in media here no media media come on we cannot move without the media who is there we need one person from the media quickly all right family life ma now you are supposed to talk sense into family there's all kinds of things going on a man believes the wife is his slave the wife believes the man is whatever everybody comes with every how do you approach from a kingdom perspective what do you think is the solution to restoring discipline and godliness in america a child is 14 years old the mother says sit down here say, i'm gonna see you to cut and the child slaps his mother and we call it human rights isn't it and when you get a cane and whip the child we call it all kinds of names i don't plan to beat my children but i plan to discipline them <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, the Bible says that now we have a more sure word of prophecy and we have the Bible to always go back to. Praise the Lord. And um, as Monroe said, that when a purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. So in the family, everybody has his or her place. Hallelujah. The father, the priest of the home, and then the mother and all that. And um, I know women lately there have been um, women trying to um, is it campaign for their place for their right hallelujah but from the scripture it's it's um, obvious where the place of the woman is where the place of the man is the children and all that so um, what I would do as a person of course seeking having sought for the leadership of the Holy Spirit is to um, bring to the consciousness of the people your place hallelujah as a child as a father as a mother hallelujah and then to trust the holy spirit to lead us hallelujah amen bless you beautiful how many of you are proud of the people this is just a random sampling it's a true proof of whether we are making progress or not hallelujah praise the lord media in five minutes a nation can become become drug addicts or, or because a celebrity went on air he was allowed to go on channel o or mtv right and you see all kinds of things and now we have on youtube ipad everything you can i mean you just need to go on youtube there's everything free pornography how to shoot guns how to kill people now god is sending you to the media you're an apostle to the media what do you think you can do or how do you plan to approach to bring the kingdom thank god for tv stations christian tv stations i think you should appreciate every ministry and every servant of god around the world that has a tv station it's a breath of fresh air in this jungle of babylon every channel you tune into their lies the media people tell lies they are manipulated by government if god gives you a television ministry will you let me be on your tv ministry most definitely sir uh, because you're my teacher and the the main the main reason why they every being was created is to give glory unto god and every invention of man is an extension of the creation of god so if the media was created by man it means that the purpose of the media is to bring glory to god and if it's not glorifying god then the purpose of it has been defeated 
So, most definitely, if I get to own a television station, when I get to own a television station, thank you, sir, it, it, the Bible would be the only law that is followed. If it is out of the scriptures, then it is not existing. Hold on. I hope you know that right now on TV stations, many TV stations, you can't say Jesus. Even God is becoming an issue. You must say divine or just something or highest something in the highest whatever it is paper ufos whatever in the highest so how do you plan to come in bluntly do you plan to be very blunt about jesus christ Extremely first blunt. of all so that we'll know now whether we need to talk to you or i am extremely blunt about jesus christ and it will be replicated in every institution that is established that the lord used me to establish if we can't say the name of jesus christ on air then there is no business being in the business of media because jesus is the person that we're looking up to he's the being he's the most divine thing he's the creator of the universe he's the creator of the person that created media so most definitely if we cannot revive him on air then we have no business being on air so jesus would be the yardstick for every single thing for an advert to come on air we must first check it what is the implication of this advert on people there are theories that guide the media and these theories have one of the most popular theories in the media is the magic bullet theory that tells you that the media has the power to act exactly the way a bullet pointed at a human being will act that once it shoots you it takes effect immediately uh, that meaning that it has a way of reforming your mindset it has a way of transforming your mindset so we must look at every single content from that perspective is this television program how is it going to affect the people positively or negatively teaching our people how to prepare for war will it affect them positively or negatively showing a news that of something that's happened uh, in somewhere will it affect the people positively or negatively accepting some musical videos will it affect the people positively or negatively if it does not affect the people positively then it cannot go on air because if it does not affect the people positively then it means that it is definitely going to be destroying lives it's going to be, it's not only going to be destroying the immediate life that you're seeing but it's going to be destroying generations to come because it's what you have learned today that your seed will replicate so if it is not in the scripture it is not going to be on air yeah. hallelujah this is powerful hallelujah let me tell you something these guys will do what they are talking about they are not pretending it and i like his competence you see him now so you can talk to a group of unbelievers who are media people so we are not just training you to pray in tongues alone there is a place of creativity there is a place of digging deep you know where god is calling you to begin to build and prepare i never knew there was a theory that governs media but this is smart you are learning something right now hallelujah don't just be spiritually braced up you must be competent enough to invade the cosmos and bring intelligent presentation of the kingdom how many of you know ravi zacharias one intelligent apologetic he stood and preached before atheists and all kinds of people communicating the wisdom of the word hallelujah education we have all kinds of people students being victimized university of abuja they've asked the students to go and relocate you can imagine after spending years of work because of the corruption of the administration those in final year will have to go and start scouting for universities to start again this is the recent announcement allocations that are sent to the educational sector don't reach everybody chops his own nuc gets his own everybody gets his own there's project from educational tax fund to build universities build roads build all of these things and they are not being effective after five years they build and say 1999 project they do it in 2005 so how do you if you become the vice chancellor of amadubello university in 2000 and what do what don't you like today that you think you can change quickly one minute praise the lord firstly the bible says he who lacks wisdom let him ask of the lord who give it liberally that's the first thing so if i'm the vice chance chancellor I would like all students to know that as, as children of God, we are ambassadors of heaven. That's the first thing. 
we are ambassadors of heaven which means that we are representing God so everybody as long as you ask for the course you want to read in your field God is sending you there to effect a change definitely and God is a God of he, he, has, he plans his things right before time so he has sinned before you so if you ask definitely of if we ask definitely of God he has sent us to effect a change so if I was a VC and um, of ABU or whichever school the first thing I will do the very first thing I will do is to bring up programs not only education line because nowadays I found out that okay, for example for example last week i was opportunity to be on a particular program no 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 what i mean is what program are you going to bring up okay a particular program i'm going to bring up is an idea 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 challenge program something that can boost up um, students iq so that in the nearest future they can actually stand on their own and do something independent on their on their own with god so that's what i'm going to do are you going to increase lecturer salary <laughs> hallelujah god bless you thank you education too what do you have to say 20 seconds amen well mine will go to the parts of the students because seriously i think what is eating deep into our educational sector these days is laziness on the part of the students that is, we rely on examination my, pra my practice. I think that is what that is what pains me most in the part if of education. Become, if you become the, the, the what do they call the rector of jam? Well, as the if, when I become the rector of jam I will definitely look for the right ways. But I think being the rector of jam is really going too far. I'm looking at it in a, in a place whereby before the students come to write exams, who are they actually? Because whatever jam have in place, it is actually what a student actually is that he goes to do. Because jam have brought up so many innovations, but exam my practice is the more they bring up new innovations, the more people devise ways. So we have to look for a way that to, to make students know that. They can do it on their own because what we have now is students who don't really believe in themselves. We believe that you see people come and pray, 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 and at the end of the day, you go to the exam hall. After reading that, you still go, what was your prayer for in the first place? If you really pray and believe that God is going to answer your prayer, I don't believe we should still go into exam. So I'm looking at it in a personal way. As a student, look at it that you can do it with the help of God. If you can pray to God and read your books, you can do it on your own. Hallelujah. Powerful. So when, when you get into the educational sector, Organize programs that encourage students. All right? Organize programs that encourage students on billboards of schools. Instead of writing Socrates, say, write, you can make it. You can believe it. Draw the student in every faculty. Draw students receiving their convocation certificate. Before they step into their lecture theaters, that's what they are seeing. They will become what they are seeing. Hallelujah. That's how to apply scripture. Music. Come music we've had people deceive us in church we sponsored them they went on air they produced album we bought it marketed it for them only for them to go on air and then sign up with something we don't understand they started reducing jesus to god god to divine divine to you you to her her to queen, queen to princess, princess to us. Are you aware of the challenge that you have to face in the music industry? What's your resolve? Praise God. Um, one thing is this. Mu you don't do music because you see others excel in music you do music because it's a calling it's a gift and one thing we need to realize is that you can't give what you don't have 
For you to give life, you need to have life. For you to minister anointing, you need to have anointing. You need to be grinded in the word of God. Music is not what will come outside and just start shouting. You can even, you, with a rough voice, you can minister anointing to people. Your private time, we should have quality time with God in our private, in our privacy. You need to give what you have. Not just come and make sure of your voice and your, your, your vocal prowess. To, to minister life, you need to have life. And the word of God should be taken seriously. God should be our inspiration. Hallelujah. Have you written any song? Name two Christian gospel artists in Nigeria that you know. Some song. Frank Edward. God bless you. Appreciate him, please. Please go back. If you tell us you are called into ministry and we tell you name two gospel ministers and, and you are chewing your mouth, we will not castigate you but will tell you go and sit down. Right? Then you pass paper and say, I want to minister in Koinonia. We say, No, go and sit down. Work on yourself first. Hallelujah. Stand out. Okay. Praise the Lord. Came to realize that in our today's world, there are many souls that are dying. There is someone that God wants to use to pull children to this kingdom of God. I want to take the example of Michael Jackson, the king of pop. If Michael Jackson should be a child of God, the crowd, he has moved proud to the world. But if that person is, a, is safe and he has pulled this crowd, all of them will make it to heaven. So when he died and I saw the crowd that are coming to him for his burial, it was a challenge to me. I said, this one, if it is for God now, what will happen? Could have been a great soul winner. Praise the Lord. Now, when I was told that Sarah, you are called to sing, and I say, God, can I sing? I don't know how to sing, but I may have people sing you for your glory. And I don't know anything about music, but I submit. And anytime I stand and I handle the mic, I see the power of God moving. And I say, Lord, connect me to the people that will try me so that when I come out, when you announce me, that voice, that the people that are waiting for me, that unsaved soul that are waiting for me. We will come and bow down before it through my administration in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Two music schools for you. Steve Strings has his music school. Ruben has his music school. Go and meet him. You will talk with him. He will train you. He's very gifted in that area. Go and meet him now. Hallelujah. Fashion. Who is? Okay, we'll soon round up. There is, there is the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. Hallelujah. Fashion. Ah! Right now in the world, every day, Versace, Gucci, um, Boss, everybody is bringing up everything. Huh? All kinds of perfumes, all kinds of things. Alright? And uh, we have everybody, all kinds. Right now, you see naked ladies on perfumes that are for men. I mean completely naked and you know all kinds of things so how do we by the way let me tell you something for music guys do you realize that when Michael Jackson died in three days the album that he was supposed to use for his tour sold 120 million dollars in three days after his death people went to buy it so music brings you to a position where you are an influence over people that's the right time to communicate Christ. Hallelujah. So fashion. We have fashion parade, tarabangs, all of the people. How do you plan to compete with those world-class people? They are very good. They are very competent. They are not small at all. All they are Brazilian, we've won all, all of these things. How do you plan to come in with it? Hmm? They are Mary Kay. They are Gucci Rush. Hallelujah. As a good designer... You must have to go out, seek. Kingdom perspective. How do you plan to be invaded? Not how do you plan to do the job. Just how do you plan to let Jesus come? Okay, through that. You must have to be careful. There are some perfumes that you must have to be careful 
when you are putting it. You understand? You must have to be. Let him talk. What is your business? I asked you to come out. You didn't come out. You must have to be very careful because in every aspect of this life, you bring out fashions. There are some fashions that they are evil. You understand? So, spiritually, you must have to say no for that. that let, I'm just assuming this, this is a shirt. Isn't it? I wear this shirt today. You don't know how it comes. It's coming about that. And you go out looking for it no, without knowing that this shirt is from maybe from evil uh, 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 spirit. You, you begin to go and buy it. So you must have to be very careful. Spiritually, allow the spirit to lead you in every fashion that you are wearing or you are putting. Like so many girls, they are backsliding. You see their heads putting. Appreciate him. Come on, appreciate him. Encourage him. Hallelujah. Paul said, Anyone who is not against us is for us. Come on, appreciate him. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. What's that? Boutique, beauty, makeup artist, education. Oh, both come, makeup artists. Oh, hallelujah! We'll give you one minute. I'm, I'm very serious about it. I'm, I'm a strange man of a person. Hallelujah! One minute, all right. How do you plan to make our sisters nice and beautiful, all right, without causing the brothers to go to hell? Brothers, am I speaking? Yeah. Am I speaking? Yeah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I will tr try by the grace of God to see that I make them up in such a way that to the glory of God, you make up to the glory of God and not to the glory of man. And just like I see it as a calling, I, I know it's not normal. It's not just a normal thing. Look good as in know the right thing to wear, the right thing to put on. Even your lipstick should glorify God. Your eye pencil or whatever, your powder should glorify God. Not the one you, you put on and look like a masquerade. Praise God. Hallelujah. In other words, they are asking, ladies, how many percent of you is the real you? Hallelujah. As we all know, essence of everything is bad. Um, you can always look beautiful. Um, doing your makeup lightly, not too, um, too bold. And when you are um, making up, you, you should go with what you're wearing. I, I like, like now, when you're applying pow powder or um, our foundation whatever it's okay as a, as as a christian makeup artist i would advise that you make up lightly don't make it too shouty you still look beautiful the way praying in tongues makes you beautiful that's a big secret i'm telling you i know you will not agree That's a big secret. I'm telling you, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in your mortal body, that same spirit will quicken, vitalize. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Um, I told some of my friends that sometimes when I get jobs and then you look at the people you're about to make up, you can't help but start praying hallelujah because sometimes you don't know where to start from again i'd like to say that trend changes but style is doesn't change at all so the best thing to do like she said is moderation hallelujah now the problem we have in the fashion world is that 
we ladies, we don't want to wear what this, this lady is wearing. All of us, we want to look different, you know. So to an extent, we try to overdo things. But the secret is just this. Look 60% the trend and then 40% your own spice. Thank you. Hallelujah. Look, let me tell you something. Listen to me. Save yourself headache and don't die for nothing. Do the best you can and leave the rest of God. Don't kill yourself and say, I must look this, must you do it? Who is complaining about how you're looking? See, there, there's pressure to be everything. I don't dress because this is the trend. Hallelujah. I dress when I like something, I wear it. You don't put me under pressure and say, this is how men of God, I don't know what they believe, I don't know what they are doing. Don't put yourself under pressure, especially ladies. Say, ah, this we've won is 5,000. You have 6,000, you are dying to use the 5,000 and fix it. Wash the one that you have and, and use it again. Who said you keep using it for the rest of your life? Is it only your roommates that will know? Hallelujah. We put ourselves under all kinds of pressure. Blackberry, you must use the Blackberry. You must use this. If your phone does not have camera, you are embarrassed. You beg your friend to help you. You are not an ambassador. You, have, you look older than your age. Because if you keep doing that for years, you, you will look, the stress will kill you. Appreciate all these people. Go back to your seat. God bless you. So together are we making progress hallelujah i didn't call these people because of a variety tonight hallelujah i called to test at a particular point when jesus was teaching he said 12 disciples come and he sent them he said let me know whether or not we are making sense and they came back he sent the 70 and the bible says they came back rejoicing and they said even the devils were subject to us in thy name hallelujah it's important for us to know that there is transformation and there is change happening in the life of everybody not everybody is going to be a pastor here true or false so our ministry is not just for pastors not everybody here is going to be a, an entrepreneur a business person not everybody maybe not everybody will even marry i didn't say god said it i said not everybody you can choose hallelujah but that whatever it is the bible says we are god's workmanship created in christ jesus that's what it means to be an ambassador an ambassador is the representative of a government if we if we just work on ministers alone what happens to the politicians that's why nigeria is suffering we have men of god we have no voice in our senate and the one or two that are there the voice of the world will strangle them to a point that they have no voice we don't want it to happen that way there is a strategy that god is giving us i follow me now i've said it here that the true apostolic ministry does not just train people it invades people and shifts cultures systems so whether it's steve strings or um or jimmy on air jimmy when we see you on exclusive to divinity or um al Heri doing our fashion whatever you know all of these things that we can see that christ is being directly before now the church has thought that the only way to train people is to just get them to pray get them to study the bible hallelujah and then have their nice and small house but there are policies being formed every day and we are suffering the consequences if we do not have voices that rise in these systems a time will come the church will be strangled are you listening to me in a place like zaria it's very difficult to give a church a land hallelujah there are many difficult ways so don't say it does not matter otherwise a time will come when certain policies will be put together do you know right now in which of the countries i don't know they officially permitted gay all right and not just gay but the gay can choose any church that they want to wed so they can come for koinonia now 
and say you must wed us and if you do not the government will seize your license you know it's only in nigeria that you can start ministry when you like abroad you there are there are ways you do it in, in, in you don't just do it whether you're a miracle worker or not are you following me now so you can imagine that that kind of thing don't say it cannot come to nigeria this is spiritual and if believers do not rise in that area if god does not have a voice we are in trouble hallelujah and this is what kingdom invasion is all about this is the principle that great men like sondia delaja used and they caused the orange revolution in ukraine a city that is a racist nation but he brought a revolution in that city and forever his name will be in the sands of time as a revivalist the church must become a platform for training and building believers must be able to come to church and not just get educated but get equipped and trained believers are not idiots we are intelligent people we are just spiritual that's all it doesn't mean we don't have common sense the church has taught believers to kill away your common sense that the way you love god is have no sense of reasoning again so the moment you step out of church you have no relevance to the system whatsoever we need believers that can have a voice both in the system jesus spoke to pharisees the government of the land he had something when he went to farmers and business people he could communicate to them he went to prostitutes and the outcasts he could relate with them jesus could relate with every strata of society he met the military people he had something to tell them he understood the law to the point that when caesar came he said give to caesar what belongs to caesar he understood the legal side of ministry Paul had this understanding. A time came, it was not his anointing that saved him. He said, look, let me tell you, I am a Jew. I was trained under Gamaliel, a Pharisee to the core. I understand these principles. Don't take it for granted that I'm preaching the cross. Doesn't mean I'm an idiot. I'm an intelligent scribe and Pharisee. And it saved him. By the way, let me tell you, Paul was not a tent maker. All right? Paul made prayer shawls, not tents. To add it to your Bible knowledge, Paul was not a tent maker. The translators made a mistake. His job was prayer shawls, not tents. Hallelujah. Do you believe that we are the revivalists that are going to shake this nation? Do you believe that we are the ones who will arise? Do you believe that above and beyond ABU, above and beyond Zaria, there is an international anointing upon your life. This is what God told me to do tonight. Do you believe that all these teachings on faith, we are teaching on faith, we are teaching on character, we are teaching on giving. You know, I've been so, I'm sure the ministers have been impressed by the turnout of Titus again and again and the way people are becoming obedient to the word of God. Hallelujah. We are teaching these things. Grooming, equipping. This is what it means to equip, to supply the tools that it takes to rule and to reign. I assure you, you will not regret what you are doing. Many of you will thank God that you pass by Zaria in your destiny. Hallelujah. We are God's workmanship. Say, I am his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. I am absolutely confident listen to me listen to me do you know that seated among us here if only god can open our eyes prophetically to see the caliber and the class of people who are seated here maybe you did not know that they will graduate such great generals today they celebrate generals all around if they are known that all of these men today who are generals and world-renowned figures this is how i've said something i said this thing right from the days we used to meet at the back of um at the back of of chapel i said we are going to be great in life and the beautiful part is we will all know ourselves we'll be related to one another hallelujah creating a kingdom community is the key to sustaining kingdom values we are not wasting our time this is not just church as usual. Oh, you jot and write, hallelujah, you get up. Uh -uh. That you leave koinonia with a resolve in your heart. 
without this understanding your christianity becomes boring because you don't know what else to do when you are born again and filled with the holy spirit we do not know that christianity is not just a religion of servitude but it's a call to responsibility where we can represent christ so you see that every time you are building while you are in class others just want to pass and go you are conscious of the fact that i am an ambassador so they are just doing malpractice they are not even listening to what the lecturer is saying because they want to go but you know that i am different hallelujah when people are getting thorough you are serious you are buying books you are building you lock yourself you are fasting like that gentleman for five days why will someone be fasting our media department just a week or two finished i think five or seven days fast how can a media department be fasting for what to hold camera but this is how much they see where they are going listen your comprehension of where god is taking you determines how much you are willing if you know you are going far it will not be a burden for you to prepare right now are you listening to me the way many of us are preparing we plan to end in zaria or to end in kaduna state or to end in the north i told myself something i said before my parents go to be with the lord they will know they gave birth to a son indeed hallelujah can your parents say that about you or they just look at you and when you are getting married your father just look at you and say thank god thank god 29 years of misery thank god we are his workmanship i bring you a message very simple message tonight that the lord is counting on you the Lord is counting on ambassadors and generals. Don't just grow up and get old. Realize that you have an assignment. Shout it. Say, I have an assignment. I have a mandate. I am not a non-entity. I am going somewhere to happen. Yes. Yes. I'm telling you. I know this about my life. I knew this years ago and today by grace I have the privilege to teach and talk to God's people it's not a mistake hallelujah are you listening to me please Steve stand up he was my roommate we were roommates hallelujah and what happened those times he used to bring keyboard room 155 old block you bring keyboard and I'll be on the keyboard and he'll be on the guitar. And then Andy, now Ambassage, who received a, a, one of the awards as, as, as the best gospel rapper. That was where we would worship. Then no koinonia, no apostle, who apostle can, no nothing. No money to buy any suits like this, no nothing. Nobody calling you sound, no nothing, but we believe. And Steve would play the guitar. I remember sometimes during our, our devotion in the morning, other people from other rooms would come because we would worship. I'll never forget the time we had a divine visitation. We were worshiping and we held our hands, three of us, and we prayed in tongues and there was such a dense presence of God. And that was how we lay down and slept there. The power of God. I remember those times I'll be sitting down and the power of God would come upon me so much and I'll just look for them and just be lay hands <laughs> those were days of practice we are still under practice but a higher level of practice who would have known he didn't have the name strings yet but today the grace of God has made him a voice around and everywhere you go to you save Steve strings people clap and some of you admire him and say oh dear just like many of you will stand five years from now and look at your congregations yes 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 you'll be married to the pastor and when you stand and see every kind of misbehavior you address it squarely and they ask you where did you learn this kind of thing from you say i remember there used to be one one big mouthed young guy like this in zaria that will not let us rest
come you are walking and you are prophesying like this yeah there was one yellow guy and i saw the way you prophesy and every time you're making your congregation laugh and they say where did you learn it from come on tell me who you say was doing it yes this is where god is taking us steve strings i just brought him up to tell you and this is only the beginning i will not be surprised today if i see steve strings playing and you're watching KICC and you just start and say, tell me I'm dreaming. This is T. Don't say you are dreaming. You think he's playing. Or one day suddenly, you have been praying that I won't go on air. I will go one day. <laughs> Let me assure you. I know many of you are praying and say, Kai, oh God, please, all these kind of people, don't go. I will go. God will take me there. And you will be part of the partners. Because God will speak to you and you are promised to be obedient. hallelujah i believe what i'm saying with the whole of my heart this is not the end of eni this is not the end of koinonia this is just a step out of the cave compared to where we are going for your life i may not know you by name listen to me you are lost in the crowd sitting here that was how i used to sit down years ago when men of god are preaching i'll be in fcs sitting quietly and men of god will come and preach some of you the grace of god is upon your life and lost in that crowd and today by grace this is how some of you by grace will be called out this is how some of you will stand some of you will be the dangotes and the otedolas and they'll be asking you to say how come nigeria is booming in agriculture like this and you say there is one called the holy spirit the holy spirit as a businessman you say yes yes you not just say god those of you who said god here yeah, i hope you know the god you are talking about i believe this with all my heart this is what we are striving after some of you are seated here you will have ministries you will be the next benny hymns you know i'm not lying the spirit of god tells you that what this guy is saying is not a lie some of you women will move in strange anointings. You will move in the anointings of Catherine Kuman, the anointings of Amphi McPherson, Madame Gunion, Maria Woodward Eater. You will bring revival in this nation. I know it. We are going to pray just for five or ten minutes and then we are done. This is my message tonight. I kept thinking about this all through. And I was wondering, I said, Lord, you really want me to do this? And the Lord said, yes. We're going to rededicate ourselves and say, Lord, here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life I want to give in serving my fellow man. Doing the will of God, here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Here is my life. I want to give. I want to give in serving my fellow man. Doing the will of God, here is my life, here is my life, here is my life, rise up on your feet, here is my life, here is my life, come on sing, here is my life, here is my life. Here is my life. Go ahead and begin to pray and say, Lord, here is my life. Pray. Say, Lord, I'm the one Joshua Selman has been talking about. You will commit great ministries to the nation. You will commit anointings into my hands. You will commit grace. Pray. 
today. Say, Lord, you are talking about me tonight. Here is my life. Pray. Kingdom invasion. Invading the cosmos. I am God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Bible says, you are a royal priesthood. You are an holy nation. A peculiar people. Called to show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness. Into his marvelous light. Pray. Say, Lord, I will change my sphere of influence wherever you are sending me to. Pray. Here is my life. Train me. Let the wisdom of Bezalel come. Let the anointing of Ezekiel come. Let the prosperity of Solomon come. Let the leadership of Joseph come. Pray. Let the grace of Esther come. Let the favor of Jesus come. Let the anointing of Paul come. Let the prophetic dimension of Agabus come. Pray. Let the evangelistic grace of Philip come. I receive grace. Hallelujah. Listen. Now we are going to pray. Every call of an ambassador, write it, is a call unto responsibility. And responsibility entails preparation. Preparation entails sacrifice. Every call of an ambassador, you are not at your best yet. No matter how great you are. I'm speaking to generals tonight. You are not at your best yet. You know how to weave. Why are you stopping there? You know how to make hair. Why are you stopping there? Every time, let me teach you something. Every time, go on your knees before God and pray on your giftings and pray on your skill. Say, Lord, let an anointing come upon it. If you are going to have the next McDonald's, say, Lord, there will be an anointing. It will be a platform to heal the sick. That your eatery will be known as a miracle center. Hungry people will come and eat and live with more than just satisfaction. There's a song Alvin Slaughter sang. He said, what's that you have in your hands? I can use it. Only if you are willing to lose it. I learned it from Jang Fa. Years ago it was his song. He liked it. I tried to learn it from him. I, I just couldn't get it. He said, I'll take the little that you have. And make it brand new. Why? Because I am El Shaddai. Tonight can you submit your giftings? And say, Lord, it may not be much, but it can change nations. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I surrender my giftings and my skill. It may not be much. I may just know how to set sound. But Lord, take it tonight. Use it for your glory. Anoint it. I know I don't have a voice. I'm a shy person. But breathe upon this servant of yours. And make a voice out of me. I just know how to do beauty, makeup, and fashion. Breathe upon it, O oh God. And give me a voice to the nations. I will stand for you. Lord, I don't know how to preach. I only have a passion for the lost. And the Lord is saying, I will anoint you. What you have is enough. Come on, pray. Lord, this is what I have. Two loaves. And five, five fish. Lord, can it feed 5,000 people? Yes, it can. Lift up your two loaves and five fish of talent. Lord, I am not eloquent. I cannot speak good English. I didn't go to a good school, but I desire to serve you. Yes, you can take you and make a wonder. He made a wonder out of his camera. Lord, my village is not in the map of Nigeria. Lord, I don't know my purpose in life, but I love you. Yes, he can use you. That's a good place to start. Lord, I don't know why I'm here on earth. But you can start from there. I 
I don't know where you are taking me, oh God, but I'm willing. I'm available. I'm available. I will not disappoint you. I'm available. Hallelujah. Run away. Listen to me. Run away from any company of friends that are visionless people and will not help you where you are going. I don't care how long you are with them. Even if they grew up in your yard, this is the time to tell them, look, I am going somewhere. Abraham got to a point where he told the servants, you cannot follow me from here. It's not that I hate you, but where I'm going requires that I carry my sacrifice alone. Many of you, that's the decision that will make God start using you. This one leg in here, and then another leg there. Better take the other leg this night and get serious. Sit down, buy books. Go to Jordan Bookstore. Jordan is there. Buy the books. You may have only Gary run away from that stupid faith message that teaches you that if you don't have anything now, your faith is not working. Sit down with your Gary and buy the books and, and, and drink it honorably. The great drank Gary like that too. There was a time we drank it and we drank it honorably. We ate bread and put granite inside and drank it with ten eras over and we were praying in tongues. Don't think we didn't do it. Oh yes, we did it. The time we took ginger I killed two birds with one stone because I used to sing there. So I used the ginger to, that's all I could get and then I'll exercise my voice. Ten era bread and we put granite inside and eat it and say, Lord, you are faithful. Now you are getting only beans and you are saying for the past four days I've eaten beans and they've taught you that's not a sign of faith. Use your money to buy books. Buy the truth. Sell it not. Sit down. Don't buy suits. You don't need to look like Joshua Selman. It took me years to get here. Don't frustrate yourself. Some of the suit I'm having, people sold it into my life. Nobody will sew it into your life yet. So stop trying to say, I'm trying to look. Mm -mm. Go and sit down. Sit down with your one trouser. Wash it. Iron it. Carry your Bible. You can't afford a concordance, but you can afford 100 Naira Cafe. Other people are browsing in the day. Beg your friend for his internet, for his modern and sit down and brown. You are signing a track record in the realm of the spirit. Say, lady, don't sit down and say, who will come and marry me? Go and find out how to be a mother, how to be a wife, how to be a minister. Go and ask people that are married. Buy juice and go and greet our, our, our mommy prophets here. Our mommy, Nankwa's mother is here. Buy juice and go and greet them. Pastor William's wife is here. Buy juice one day and go and greet and say, mommy, what will you advise me as a young lady? Be going around and say, Who will come and marry me? Who will come and go on all these nonsense? Hallelujah. And I say, Guy, stop claiming the life of successful people and sit down and start asking them what they did to get to where they are, they are getting to. All those I claim, I claim, I claim. You see, and you, yeah, I claim. You even draw it. You would draw it and sit down and see it there. I tell you, it will not come to pass. Hallelujah. You can buy Zobo. I know that we have not attained yet. But there is something we can tell you. Hallelujah. Make pepper soup and run and corner Jake's. And say, Jake's, please. God is sending me to the nations. We went to massacre. We went for Panchin Crusade. We have gone for crusades. Jake single-handedly, as an undergraduate student, took over the church of God in, in, in Shika, the church of God in Giwa, we used to tease him and say he has Giwa, Giwa Church or Giwa Assembly. He was the president of, uh, of gospel team. He has something to say. It's time for you to begin to respect the grace and the people around you. You can look at your roommate. Stop looking at your roommate as your roommate. Start looking at the anointing upon your roommate. You may be 10 years older than the person. Hallelujah. Very important. The person may even be your mother. One day come and kneel down before your mother, not as your mother, but as the servant of God. And say, bless me. Let your hand touch my head. Open up a door of destiny. We did it in Lagos. Abi, there was a time we met Mommy Oje. That family is an enviable family. All of us got down on our knees. We said, Mommy, we will not, go, we will not come back to Lagos until something happens. 
and that woman lives. See, let me tell you, we are like bees. We are a product of many blessings. It's not everything we got on our secret place. Follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Some of you who are very rude to elderly people, you see whether it's your mother or your brother, you see everybody just insults them because you now know how to use blackberry. Say, honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long. You don't honor them, you will die young. It's not a prophecy, it's the word of God. Men of character and grace. Say, after me, I'm willing to sit down. Say it, I'm willing to sit down. And pay the price. And God will honor me. One more time, say, I'm willing to sit down and pay the price yes let's see more of you in jordan bookstore go and meet the media collect koinonia messages god is sending you from ministry you don't have the tape of anybody only the program that you preach you just preach all kinds of disjointed scriptural things that's the only tape you have you are learning go and buy get these things they are free sit with them sit with them because they invited you and say okay go and preach in this final year program you suddenly carry one leader and say come you help me with my itinerary sit down Jerry. when i see people do all those things i tell them sit down i don't care what you think you are prophesying i'm not the kind of person you come to me and say god said the moon and start i tell you sit down now come with god be with god are you blessed tonight lord we thank you give us grace to sit down i assure you brothers and sisters you will bless god for these days of your life you will bless god ask our mothers and our parents and they will tell you as young people we are setting a great foundation lord we give you praise be glorified we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity Jebrais Kobranda Skala Bahari Yata Bradu Sobradi Shidaraba. Can you just speak in other tongues in one minute? Jege Barada Balarabash, sing in the spirit. Senanana Matadiana Rosa. Jema Dada Dada Madana Dada. Jeka Barada Basuna Dada Dada Lion of Judah, the Lamb upon the throne, I hail you, Most High. The Lion of Judah. The Lamb upon the throne, I hear you, Lord El Elyon, God most high, Jesus Christ, you are El Elyon, God was high Jesus Christ
song that is upon my spirit right now. It says let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let the weight of your glory fall very simple song. Let it cover all the earth Let the weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. There's a part to the song that says, Let it cover all the earth. Let it cover all the earth. your voice and sing let it cover this place tonight Oh, 
mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. You are mighty on your throne. Yes, you are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. Worship Him. His presence is mighty in this place. 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 Your presence is mighty in this place. Mighty in this place. Mighty in this place. We will write in your name Adonai you reign on now We will write it's in your name Adonai you reign on now in your name we will be healed you are That we will rise. You are Adam night. You reign on night. You reign on night. Yeah. You are mighty. Adonai, mighty in place. Worship Him, it's part of the meeting. You are awesome in this place. The Bible says, sing unto the Lord a new song. Hallelujah. Just lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I will not let you go till you change my life. Lift your voice and pray. I will not let you go. Till you change me. God will do remarkable things in this place tonight. You have not come to waste your time. He can and will change your life. You are mighty in this place. Yeah. Worship him. This is 
part of the meeting. That your presence is mighty in this place. Oh, for there is nothing we can do without your presence. There are people sick. There are lives oppressed. There are families who have traveled so far. Not to meet a man. Lord, we ask that you will move in remarkable ways tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Please, I want you to be very serious tonight. Sometimes, listen, sometimes, you know, we come for meetings like this and we do not know that the season of our visitation is here. We can be here carelessly, looking at others getting healed you have to press it doesn't come by itself hallelujah transformation is not automatic koinonia is not a museum it's not where you come and just spectate whether you are inside or any of the overflows outside let your heart be open with a desperation from the depth of your heart to touch god it doesn't take time for God to turn around that situation. It takes faith and it takes a heart that is hungry and desperate. Especially for many of us who have traveled from so far. You don't want to travel, risk your life on the road and only come and waste your time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight will be very, very, very powerful. We are going to be fast about this. Um, hallelujah. There's someone I just felt led in my spirit. Um, he didn't even plan to just come and minister. But I'll let him just come and bless us 10 minutes. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm not the kind of person that is too quick to do this. But um, we went for a meeting. And before I came up on stage, he ministered. And I was greatly blessed. I was first and foremost moved by his sincerity for God. Many musicians are just noisemakers looking for ladders to climb up. By the grace of God, you will never see those kind of people on this stage in the name of Jesus Christ. Even if I'm not around, something will drive them. Hallelujah. So I'd like your heart to be open. It's 10 minutes and it's going to lead us. Um, I prayed for him and I know that God will really bless him everyone you see who comes up and not only to bless him but to also further announce his ministry and speak it loud there is an anointing yes it is within the power of god's people to speak when we see people who are doing things that are worthwhile we speak and we endorse and we announce them and the day they mess up we rebuke them the day they refuse we command the glory to live and it will live hallelujah praise the lord his name is the sax preacher many of you may have heard him and i love him come god bless you god bless you hallelujah amen, amen. god bless you all right so we'll give you 10 minutes just bless our hearts our hearts are open to receive of your anointing and your ministry the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 
Daddy, I want to say thank you very much. I want to use one minute to say since the day I shut my eyes on you, I have not remained the same. Your protocol called and said they are preparing me for a meeting. And I said, no, I am coming. I will come. Sir, you are a blessing to this generation, sir. It's a privilege to have him as a father. By his grace, I am like 10 years in ministry now. But I have never seen a man like him. And I said, no. I have a meeting tonight in Kaduna. But I said, no, I must come and... Pa- I didn't have the intention of ministry, sir. I'm just here to just listen and enjoy you. That's my mission here. But if a daddy can call you and give you an instruction, you must go ahead and do it. You can't say no. Daddy, thank you, sir. It doesn't take God a second to visit you. If there's a second in between second, it doesn't take God. It's just like a speed of light. The book of John chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit and is looking for those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. You must let go. You must forget your personality. You must forget all the things you have done in the past. You must let go of what you have done some minutes before you come to this auditorium. And that is why the Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 4, verse 10 to be precise. And he said, we're going to join the 24 elders. Those are kings. They remove their crown and they drop it to the ground to worship the I am that I am. The Agbanelagbaton, the Arugo Otoy, the Erute Jetimbe, the Omnisciencia, the Agitikba. That is why the house man called him Sir King Salam. The Yoruba man look at him and call him Eru Jeje. Obalana, Obaloni, Obatiti Aye. Look at him and say, Now he now look at him again and Kabiosi. The evil man look at him and say, How do I express this God? And he now look at him and say, ah. Look at the heavens. No pillar is holding the heavens, but the heavens still stand. Who said there is no God? In the next 60 seconds, I want you to do something crazy. something that you have never done before
the Bible says that let everything that has bread uh,
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your life will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. And um, you see sometimes when people do certain things, they themselves do not even know what it is that they have done. I have prayed for you, but I want to pray for you. Come with your friends. You will step into levels you never dreamt of. It doesn't take time. It takes an anointing. You see, listen, listen. It is not what you do that makes you succeed. It is how you do it. It's not doing certain things that make people succeed. I want to pray for you. I have learned in my little life that the anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. The difference. Praise the Lord. I stretch my hands upon all of you right now as I speak. May the grace that lifts men come upon every one of you as I speak right now. Receive it right now. The grace that lifts people. There is an anointing that lifts a man. It's not trial and error. Let it come upon you right now. I open up the gates of cities, the gates of territories, and I speak in the name of Jesus. A level of grace. May your saxophone stop being an instrument. May it become a weapon from today. A weapon of healing. You and your entire team. Let it burn like fire in your spirit. Like fire upon your spirit. Never to be the same. You will sing with the sounds of the heavens. And everybody that hears that sound will know that your communications are of the spirit. There is a grace that lifts men. You can try. You can struggle. You can beg. You can connect. No. See, every time, listen, every time you see consistent results, regardless of the situation, there is an anointing. Please, learn this. There is an anointing. There is an anointing that translates men swallows up the weaknesses of people may that be your testimony in the name of jesus christ god will give you wisdom let your ministry enter another dimension i pray for character for all of you see this is usually the problem listen let me i'm i'm teaching you are learning the most important aspect of the anointing is the character to maintain it not the anointing because you see the anointing is very charismatic the most powerful ability of a man of god is self-control the ability to keep quiet even when you have what to say the ability to walk within the jurisdiction of the grace apportion there are many 
of we people we don't have self-control especially over an opportunity like this everybody now wants to show and you do not know where God has stopped and you want to continue to stretch it to show you are anointed and then you step out of the spirit and begin to walk in the flesh because some of you are here for this same anointing but you see the, it's not just the anointing believe me this is not an issue of prayer and fasting it's an issue of knowing God and understanding his ways God is only committed to backing what he instructed if he did not direct you he will not back you hallelujah God bless you John chapter 3 verse 16 let's just look at scripture quickly and then we'll pray there is a lot that God wants to do tonight these guys have already stared the anointing and you see the thing with the anointing is once he's stared it doesn't stop he doesn't know whether it's miracle service or Easter John chapter 3 verse 16 I like you all to be sensitive the anointing has been stared up in this place many of you do not know what the staring of the anointing is the moment your eye sees there is a relationship between your heart and your eyes so once your eye sees it immediately your spirit is open and the moment your spirit is open the spirit of God starts moving he doesn't care whether you are preached or not because that's his desire hallelujah and usually once the anointing starts moving it's very difficult to contain it because the hearts of people are open in the name of Jesus I'm hearing the sound of thunder I know this is not physical I'm hearing a sound of thunder like lightning is coming upon people right now in the congregation why do I see this it's like the sound of thunder what I hear in my spirit. hallelujah please pay attention the meeting is on I'm seeing ministering spirits it's a class of angels I'm seeing them walk inside and outside just let me do what is happening ministering spirits there are not many times I see these kinds of angels I'm seeing them walking inside and outside ministering spirits they are angels that impart strange levels of graces ah, ah, they will touch you where you are it will be like fire they will touch you where you are as they touch you they release your miracles as they touch you they release your breakthroughs as they touch you they break those chains nah. they are touching you on behalf of families touching you on behalf of families
Direction. That's what I hear. God is giving men direction. It's like an anointing. It will come on you, outside and inside. Direction, an end to that confusion. Right now, it's coming like light. But then you will hear him direct you. Direction. 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 What is that area of confusion? His light shines upon it right now. For marriage, direction. Direction, direction, direction for where to settle down, geographic location, direction is coming by the Holy Ghost. Direction, somebody is praying and say, Lord, show me. The Lord is saying, I am showing you, it's coming upon your spirit. I'm giving you direction on what to do. Direction. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the names of people written on a paper and put under a stone. And the Lord is saying, take it out. Lord, where are those people whose destinies have been buried? As I'm speaking right now, inside and outside. Right now, right now. As I speak, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now, where you are sitting, you will receive a visitation. I pull it out. This is a miracle service. I pull it out now. Oh yes, release that lady. I see it in the spirit. Release that lady right now. Release that lady's destiny. Something is happening to you where you are. Something is happening to you where you are. Begin to receive it by faith. Like the dew of heaven resting in this place, inside and outside. Lord, we receive what you are doing.
Just sit down if you can. Those under the anointing, just leave them. John 3, 16. I just want to the Lord has just healed a lady of a breast lump you have a lump in your left breast check it right now check it right now check it and come out right now right now I don't know why God is just interrupting please check it check it check it right now in fact I see three people check it this is a family please we are not playing games inside and outside i'm seeing three ladies who came with like a lump on their breast check it right now that devil has gone back to hell please check it quickly and come out if they are under the anointing when they when they are all right let them come out very quickly let them come out quickly augustina augustina i'm hearing the name like Augustina Augustina if there's someone like that you can just make your way to the front quickly Augustina the Lord is judging evil in your family this is oppression this is what I'm seeing oppression as it's happening to you there's somebody outside this same anointing is touching the person outside the second overflow the anointing of the spirit is touching somebody outside the lord is bringing judgment to wickedness because i'm seeing that this is something that has to do with witchcraft it has tied your life and your family down and the lord is telling me release augustina release augustina Release Augustina. Release Augustina. And as it's happening to you, it's also happening to that other lady. In the name of Jesus, I release you right now. From every chain that has held you, be released. Your family be released. It's time for you to testify. I release both of you prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ every door the devil has tied let it be opened by the anointing of the spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah hallelujah I'm seeing a whole family that came there is a family God wants me to minister to you are five five people I don't know if there is a mother I'm seeing a family with five people who came from somewhere and the Lord wants me to minister to them you are five in all you're five in all please when you identify them they can come up so that we will just minister to them very quickly hallelujah for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. And the Bible says. That he proved that love. By giving. His only begotten son. Please listen. Don't worry about what is happening. Just let me have your attention please. He says. He gave his only begotten son this we can take it from there that that statement he gave his only begotten son is the summation of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ are we together now Please help her wrap her I command that spirit to leave her right now 
now and never return in the name of Jesus release her family release I see a lot of money being tied release it now as you go in the name of Jesus the Christ So the Bible says he gave his only begotten son hallelujah for God so loved the world the word there is cosmos the social system that has to do with people listen please and has to do with the entire territory the social system he says for God so loved the world and he proved that love listen listen because love must be manifested to be appreciated are we together now and the bible says that he gave his only begotten son and please don't be confused there is a name that son is called jesus because there are many people who can preach to be the begotten of the father but the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten right until the resurrection of man he was the only begotten please listen you see everything about this bible was pointing to this very revelation the revelation of jesus christ everything the book of revelation says the revelation of jesus christ not the revelation of a formula or a principle so the law the prophets abraham samson isaac judges everything was tracing to the genealogy of jesus christ and then the bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth listen jesus came with a message and his message was very simple he said the word repent is not the word turn from your sins no preachers preach that as a result of lack of understanding the word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another please just be patient with me this family or minister are we together now turning from one direction to the other but the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person his sacrifice and his government that's the first step and then you begin to walk in accordance to his principles only when you do that are you said to have repented many people have not repented they want to repent they think they have repented they hope they are repenting the first message that was preached after the resurrection of Christ is that men and brethren what shall we do and this is what the apostle said repent for the remission of your sins so the Bible says he gave his only begotten son you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today in heaven if you know it just sing it with me i really want to worship you my god you have won my heart and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one that I gave your life.
like you give your ATM for someone to use and withdraw money. He gave, he donated. And Jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things. Listen, Jesus did not just come, please, I want you to pay attention. It's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray. Jesus did not just come to show us how God looked alone. He came to show us how we should look. So when he walked upon the earth, he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created. He was invincible. The Bible records. Above situations, above circumstance, with unlimited power, yet a man of extreme self-control. He knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet. There would be so many sick people like the 10 lepers he would heal one and just walk away because his desire was not to show power his desire was to do the will of the father he was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his father than building a ministry people tried to say look build a ministry and he said no 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 i can of my own do nothing as I see my father do. So he came to show us the prototype of the true Christian life. A life that is completely yielded to the will of the father. Void of self-ambition. Void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of Christ. A life that is crucified with Christ. Are we together now? And then... The Bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago. We know it as the passion of the Christ. It started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him. John chapter 6 says, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot be part of me. You cannot have my life. So while they were taking the communion, they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself and then the bible says he went to gethsemane and there he cried he prayed until tears were like drops of blood afterwards he was ready to be crucified and brothers and sisters i know that we celebrate easter today is good friday pain is what made today good are we together sacrifice is what made today good if he refused to lay down his life. Listen, when Pilate looked at him and said, don't you know I have the power to free you? He said, ah, 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 ah. He said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father. He said, I have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again. In other words, I was not coerced. My love for you made me to sacrifice my life, my reputation and everything. We talk a lot about Good Friday, but we never know what made it good. This is what made it good. That a man gave his son, then the son gave his life. Are we together now? It's one thing to give your child. It's another thing for the child to agree. He can refuse. Jesus had the right to refuse. In fact, he was tempted to negotiate it. He said, Father, if it be possible, you are the all wise God. There is another way you can do this thing. But then he remembered, nevertheless. I told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. The true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant. Are we together now? The father gave Jesus. Jesus gave his life. And don't be confused. He gave his blood he gave his righteousness. Are we together now? He gave up his position. And when he was doing that, he had you in mind. Listen. Listen. He never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself. The Bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity, yet without sin. But he took your place because the Bible says we all like sheep 
have gone astray. Right? He said, every man has gone his own way. With our ideas about God, our ideas about success. Would you give our mother a chair, please? Let her just sit down. I'll minister to you in a moment, please. At least let her just sit down. Hallelujah. Well, all of you, you can sit down. I'll call you now. They're all looking at me. Um, sit down. Especially this, my friend. Friend, how are you? What's his name? Aaron. Kelvin. Just get somewhere. For, they can sit around. And I'll attend to you now. Just five minutes. Let me establish what. Hallelujah. So, please come, sir. I offend a government and they are about to destroy me listen please about to destroy me and the bible testifies that i have no power in myself and then someone comes and while i'm on my way to destruction he interrupts and he says i love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way this is what i want you to do stand back and watch me pay the price and while he was on the way while they were flogging him in his mind he was saying mankind i hope you are watching this would have been you i hope you are watching i hope you are watching the scars as he began to bleed he said i hope you are watching see if two people come and they tell you they love you the best answer to give those two people is I'm watching because love is a verb are we together now I am what watching. all kinds of things have told you they love you but they left you but Jesus said watch my love I'm not going to make noise about it first stand back and while they flogged him he said if it's for you I will still go the extra mile and they flogged him the father gave him he gave his health the father gave him he gave his prosperity the father gave him when we say his life let's break it down what what is in his life that he gave because that's what he gave you what was in the life of jesus the ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases the father gave him he gave it away in exchange the bible says he was rich but he gave it are we together now he had a reputation of dominion but he laid it aside i hope you know that they stripped him naked the covering you see around is just for social reasons when you're watching movies a 33 year old man naked children watched him adults watched him people mocked at him and said you claim to be a king and he said this is all for you are we together blood dripping out from every part of his body every time he was tempted to give up he said no if i give up where i stop is where you must continue and i know that even if it was for the last nail you still will not be able to take it see listen if you think what happened on the cross is what Jesus just died for, physically, you will be deceived. Because there are human beings who have been crucified. What he stopped you from was not the physical activity. It was what was happening in the spirit. You can do the physical one, I guarantee you. People have been crucified. But you don't know what that meant in the spirit. A lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening. He became Adam from Gethsemane. From Gethsemane to the cross, he was no longer the Christ. He was Jesus, Adam, the very man of sin. Mortality came upon him. Please listen. And the father kept watching. He had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So there was no negotiation about receiving. The blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory. Are we together now? When they took him to that cross and they nailed him, as his blood began to drip upon the earth, and in that excruciating pain, 
It was a way of torturing criminals. He was not just looking at Mary and John. He was looking at you. He was looking at me. He was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness. And he said, if it's for you, I will do it. But he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight. Three words that represented victory. It is finished. Oh, hallelujah. I didn't study English. But I know that when a man says, it is finished. It is finished. Is a reality that is present and continuous forever. Not it was finished. You would have said the condition for it finishing has changed. So we have to start another one. It is finished. The question is what is the it that has been finished? First, that inability to access the father. We call it lack of righteousness. He said that error is finished. That, 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 that Christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings, having to atone for your sins by your own strength, I brought it to an end. That ability of saying qualify and come to God, he said it is finished. You now will come through my own invitation my own access like i organize a program and i invite someone and while you are about to drive him i say no 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 that's my guest come but you are not only his guest he also made you the one to be celebrated please listen there is a dimension of this we have not learned and this is what i want to teach us when jesus went to hell and met satan a discussion transpired and Satan said remember Adam and he said I don't remember Adam I am him don't you see this is Adam and Satan knew it was true because only Adam had the right to collect the key no other man could collect the key and so he went as the second Adam and said you killed Adam and every man that came from him let me have the keys. Revelations 1 verse 1. When you read downwards. I am he that was dead. But now I am alive and I hold the keys. He collected the keys. Listen. Access to the earth. Access to dominion. Access to God's life. That's the most important part. The life of God. I'm going to explain it. When he resurrected. Watch this. Did you know. That if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven it would just be that he was victorious and then the bible says according to the book of hebrews that he went to heaven as the high priest the lamb the sacrifice as everything and then he took his blood poured it upon that tabernacle and said father you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health and all of this because you are a just God. Your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice. The Bible says they are the foundations, meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it. But now he says, every time you think justice, let mercy begin to speak. Watch this. I really want you to get a revelation of this. It will change your life. Every time the voice of judgment, the voice of mess or of, of justice begins to speak, I will not fight it. But remember that I not only paid the price, I paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path. Are we together now? When that happened, a coronation happened in heaven we see that coronation the psalmist gave us a revelation and from Philippians chapter 2 the Bible says a name an office an identity was given to him in heaven to sit upon that throne are we together now 
and the bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption man's vindication must pass through him meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man a man is only justified when he justified the father put it in his office are we together watch what he did when he sat down on that throne he told man there is another dimension you do not know i know that i paid the price for you but i want to teach you another dimension we paid it in covenant listen you did not participate in anything but out of my love i took you and made it as though in me you were the one who paid that price so not only did he die for you you died in him are we together now so in christ every man's iniquity every man's um basis for accusation was nailed in christ paul saw this in galatians 2 20 and he said i have been crucified with christ nevertheless he said i live yet not i but christ is an exchange he died for me now i live in him in other words the day jesus christ dies there is no reason why i should be alive because we are in him so my life is no longer something i get outside of him my life is an overflow of what i have received from him and he so designed that from that point hence listen everything i derive will be because of him in him and with him my joy is because of him my prosperity is because of him please listen my peace is because of him so at no point in this kingdom would i be found leaning on my own strength because the moment i lean on my own strength the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me and i abide in him he said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that i have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believer's victory is what christ did on the cross but not just what christ did on the cross because that's what a lot of people say oh i know what he did no let's continue john 3 verse 16 please give it to us so that we can finish up it's not enough to know what jesus did that's not where i'm going tonight this is the part that concerns you that whosoever believes believes what no 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 it didn't say that whosoever believes anything there is a specific thing you have to believe to have life you can believe jesus is a prophet it never gives life you can believe jesus is a healer it doesn't give life are we together he says believe in him who is the him who is the him no you see you see where we miss it we have been believing in rubbish who is the him who he said god no believing in god doesn't give you life who is the him that's where i want us to get to tonight you, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of god's life we believe but what do you believe are we together you can believe the shepherd believe me you will not be saved believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation are we together believe in him who is him
the bible i love the way the bible puts it as many as believed in him see that brothers and sisters i am many things and all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me are we together a child believes a father a worker believes a ceo a Jimmy's daughter believes in her father she doesn't believe in a ceo we believe in a jimmy adegbeye the multi-millionaire that's what you believe you will never get fatherly love from that dimension are we together now you may get financial advice you may get intelligence you may get all of this i believe in professor femi you will get the intellectual dimension there is a dimension of god you must believe to have life many of us have believed him as a healer you can be healed and still go to hell please hear me many of us have believed him as a savior you can have i mean you can have a what do we call it a, as a shepherd what dimension of him have you believed i will tell you now ready there is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved whosoever calls upon the name of the lord shall be saved what is lord the word lord means a conqueror are we together now listen please it's not just a savior like the one who died he didn't resurrect as a savior he died as a savior he did not resurrect as a savior he resurrected as lord a winner a champion one qualified to transfer what he has and the bible says whoever believed that listen whoever believes in him that name that was given he said he shall not perish the word perish is not the word go to hell are we together because the bible says whoever does not believe is already condemned shall not perish here it is but have money but have the word everlasting is a wrong interpretation everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is life that does not end your your life does not end you only change location to continue the living that's why we never say will you spend eternity you must spend it the question is where are we together now thank you don't mind this my funny friend where will you spend eternity not will you spend you must spend it the word eternal life there is the word divine life is the greek word zoe i know you've heard it many of us quote it but just listen the word zoe listen let me describe it for you it's a life that does not one depend on any external input for its sustenance it's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself are we together now like you do not have to source for anything within that system is self-sufficiency within that system is the ability to be any and everything that life can become health that life can become victory that life can become wisdom so when the bible says we have life it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out no something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you please i want you to believe this the bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part whoever believes in him the lord who was a savior became a conqueror now sits as a king the father gave the son the son gave his life your job is to receive that life when you receive that life in reality the bible says certain things will begin to change you see the life is a programming the moment it enters you it deconstructs itself to different dimensions please listen the life of god is not just a vague thing that comes up no 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 it is the life 
that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom. It is the light you have received that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness. Many people have not received this life. They want healing, but they have rejected the life of God. Many people have come out for altar call. Father, I, I, I'm, I'm born again. I believe in you, this and that, but they have not received it. He said, as many as received. Brothers and sisters, you can reject it. Many seated here have rejected it. I give you my ATM card. You refuse to collect it. You can reject it. Yet you need what only my ATM card will give you. You can borrow money from Pastor Lawrence, borrow money from uh, a Promise and so on and so forth. And I say, take my ATM card. The point is, you don't just take it and hold it. When you take the card, something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow. You see, the life of God is not, how do I put it now? It's not like something you just put in your pocket. All right, look at this. I have this handkerchief. So we say, I have the life of God. Do you have it? Yes, no. That's not the idea of the life of God. The idea of the life of God is like a programming. Something enters you and begins to walk in you. It is God who is at work in us to will and to do. So it's working. The moment the life enters you, it's like a genetic mutation. It starts altering your configuration. Are we together now? And the Holy Spirit is the custodian of that life. When he comes... He begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom. All of a sudden, listen, because of that life, you are now spiritually alive. You can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this. Why am I always failing? You will never just know that ordinarily. It takes that life to open that awareness in you. Are we together now? It's like glasses. You all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective. No. I'm not supposed to fail like this. I can't, I can't just be taking it like that again. Something must change. No, I've seen a trend in my family. People don't get married till they are 45. I'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life. And the Bible says, he who has the son has eternal life. Zoe. God's kind of life. Now watch this. Although you have that life, it takes the ministry of the Holy Spirit, please listen, to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life. This is where a lot of people miss it. Oh, I have life. I have life. The same way you say, I have a car. The same way you say, I have an ATM card. Can you use it? I have given it to you. Do you know how to activate the operation of that life? Do you know how to make that life work in you? We have been taught that it works automatically. No, sir. No, sir. You can claim to have the life and still die of sickness. Now, this is where Satan's ministry comes. The thief cometh not. But to steal, to kill. If you don't have anything, he doesn't come to steal. Are we together now? Satan comes. His first ministry is deception. What is deception? Painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it. So you believe that I do not have this life. If I truly had this life, I should not be sick. Are we together now? If I have this life, I should be doing exploits academically. If I have this life, now listen. Here is where the confusion has come in the body of Christ. There are those who are saying you have this life. There are those who are saying you don't have this life. You better fight your way into receiving it. Both of them are incomplete. On one side, you are seeing the supposed by faith. You believe, you know, you acknowledge that that life is in you. But then you are not seeing the difference the Bible said should be produced. Are we together now? This is the dilemma of many Christians. I gave my life to Christ from the day I got born again. My life has not changed. It's been 10 years. I will tell you why. Eternal life is being frustrated within you. 
because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content of that life it's like buying a phone you admire it you look at it but you do not know how to work with it that was the lamentation of the psalmist in psalm 82 from verse 5 he says they know not not they have not they know not neither will they understand he said they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says have i not said ye are god and all of you are children of the most high he says but you shall what die like mere men listen please listen an heir as long as he is a child does what the bible starts by calling him what an heir a partaker of an inheritance a partaker of a reality but it says as long as he's a child the word child here is devoid of strategy devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process he said he differed not from a slave i can receive the life of god that contains health vitality prosperity and still be under a cause i tell you hear me brothers and sisters because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of god's word therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creation but we do not know that the communications of god are twofold there is the prophetic communication of god speakings according to his realm of existence but there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word it is the nature of god to call things as though they already appear are we together now hebrews chapter 2 he put it very beautifully he said god had put all things under the subjection of man he said god did not leave anything left but he said as it is now we do not yet see all things are we together now so you have come to answer the altar call the life is in you but you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we all read it together now you are born again brothers and sisters but the truth is if you will be sincere you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you so it puts believers in a dilemma there are those who are saying keep believing that is gone one day it will go hey wonder shall never end if you have that kind of ideology you are in for trouble and then on the other hand there are those who act as though they really have nothing so they are trying they live per day we survive today let's see how the war of tomorrow will be i know that there will be all kinds of things are we together now so although they read that there is victory in christ the truth is they don't believe it they just know let's fight per day they are the ones who suspect everybody and everything if sam looks at you like this is a sign that is an enemy so they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare and by warfare they mean a consistent never-ending contention both Are we together? This is prophecy. But there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy. Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do. But I have a role to play. Nobody gets saved just because Jesus died. You will go to hell. There is a response. Please listen. The idea of grace does not mean not participating. No. No. The idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration. Are we together? Uh-huh. The difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation. There is a participation that is unto the flesh. There is a participation that is a response of faith. That is the participation that brings results. 
Are we together now? So if the Bible says, by tithing, you open your heavens. When I'm tithing, I'm not acting under the law. I'm not trying to do something. I am responding. There is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness. But in any case, there must be reception by faith. And that in itself is a participation. This looks very simple, but it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are, are not receiving. I don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back. I want you to live victorious. If all you think is healing, you will be frustrated. If all you think is on my own, think God's life and all its content is away. The life of God that can become any and everything. Any and everything. Christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom. He's been made unto me strength. He's been made unto me prosperity. That life is the word. And as the word opens up, it shows me the dimensions of its operation. And then I look out first to believe. Number two, to respond. Everybody say believe. Say respond. This is your part as a believer. You, when you respond to what you do not believe, is a waste of time. So the Bible says, whoever believes in him, you receive. But that life begins to teach you certain things. And you respond to those teachings. Please listen to me. Part of what that life teaches you is that Satan is a trickster. He's a deceptive person and he will not just because you have life leave you. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. The next time he would come, he didn't come directly again. He came through Peter and Jesus said, I still detect you. And the devil says, do not, I mean, God said, do not be unaware, speaking through the apostle of the devil's strategy. Are we listening to me, please? Because many people get up bragging. I'm not under any curse. I'm not under this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. That's not a lie. But you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality. So you will still brag around and die like mere men. Are we together now? I really believe in Jesus Christ. And I really believe in his word. But I also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases. And my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this. Brothers and sisters, there is a part. There is a part that you have to play. Believing is not enough. Believing talks of conviction, persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement. But there must be a response. Your response is your action of faith. So the Bible says this in the book of Hebrews. There remained a rest, a Sabbath for the people of God. In spite of what Christ has done, there still remains a rest. And then it says, let us therefore labor. This is Paul in the New Testament. What is the idea of labor? Push God aside. No, let us find out our place of response. Let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom so that we will know where our place of alignment is. And he says, whoever labors like that, there is a guarantee he will enter his rest. There is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body. Believe me, it's not just by claiming. You will claim and be shocked. There is a way you respond. Remember during our time of fasting, we're showing you different mysteries. These are all the components that are called the life of God. Right? He gave you life. 
but it takes faith and it takes an operation of the spirit so satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons one they have rejected the life and the solution to that is an altar call i'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering the second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance never trivialize the role of deception in a man's destruction deception the first deception is that you don't need to do anything again oh brothers and sisters hear me i fear god it's a big deception as free as salvation claims to be if you do not respond you are going to hell there is always a participation that's what we call koinonia everybody say participation if you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of god's life there is a participation if there will ever be prosperity there is a participation now the participation is a response of faith god credits it as a response of faith not an addition to what he has done it's a compliment so he would see a sick body and say your faith you believed i am able to heal you you were convinced based on the report you had and now i gave you an instruction waiting for your participation you got up your faith he calls it your faith so what is your faith faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of god's word believing is not faith no 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 believing is the first step to faith you can believe without having faith a believer is not a possessor a believer who responds is a possessor there are so many people listen to me who are trusting god for all kinds of things here i'm teaching you how to get results tonight god is not a herbalist there is a participation Ejimi, this is a gift for you what is he supposed to do watch this his response now he's standing up is a sign that he believes me i can choose to hide it please sit down sir sorry i'm using you hope i'm sorry i'm just doing this game with your husband hallelujah Ejimi, do you believe i'm having a phone and that phone is for you if you believe it walk up to me faith this is faith the walking to me although he has not seen it so he's putting my integrity to the line it's up to me to prove that i'm not lying so i bring it out if he comes to me listen if he comes to me and i say ah i'm playing he believed i'm the one who is a liar and the bible said god looks for anybody who is greater than him so that he will show you he's not playing games are we together now let's look at one scripture thank you sir romans chapter 8 please romans chapter 8 let's look at verse 35 romans 8 35 just that one scripture and then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister romans chapter 8 35 okay give us from verse uh, 32 32 thank you everyone please read if you are a christian if you are a child of god this is good friday well even if you are not a child of god read i will soon make an altar call one to read he that spared not stop who is the he now god is trying to make a statement and is tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before it's like saying he that built this bridge in kaduna and built it excellently it's about to build something so in case you doubt what i'm about to do find out whether i did that thing or not he's about to make a statement and he's saying don't you dare doubt me for what i'm about to say he that did not spare his what own son but delivered him up for who what's the next statement how shall he not with him also freely give us what 
This is God speaking. He said, look at me. Your healing is a lesser thing. I gave Jesus. What is healing? I gave Jesus. What is witchcraft? If I did not, if I spared my son, then you will know that there are some things I can spare. But I carried my son. I gave him. And now I have gathered you to give you healing. And you are asking God, this my, this have been bleeding for six months non-stop. And God said, if I spared not Jesus, I will not spare anything. Whatever it would take me to prove myself, I will do it. If it means me killing somebody, I will do it. I, I gave my son, who will I not be able to kill? Listen, this is the basis for conviction. So every time the devil is trying to say, look, 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 look. Will that prophecy work? Just remember Jesus. Jesus begged the father to have mercy. The father refused. So listen, Jesus said, father, reconsider. The father said, you are joking. Stay there. And now God is saying, I want to bless you. And the devil is saying, no. And Jesus is saying, God is saying, just believe me. And watch how I will do anything it takes. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything? Too hard for me to do. I am that I am. Hallelujah. If the father did not give Jesus, it's like a man. Listen, it's like a man who vowed to punish every offender and he saw his wife. And the guy said, I'm a just person. And he punished his wife. Then somebody throws a and says, Oh, God, you know, we are Nigerians. What do you think he's going to do? You say, That's my wife inside the gutter. I'm a military man. This is my wife. I paid the price for six months to get a yes from her. She's in that gutter. I don't know the consequence of my action. If you think I'm going to forgive you, listen. If it took God refusing. To even give Jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake. Then I assure you, whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you believe me? We are going to pray and say, Lord, help my own belief. That, listen, listen, listen. That spirit that makes me keep wondering, can God do it? Listen. Don't, don't make that foolish statement tonight. I, I was praying on the, tonight, before I came here, I was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding. If you know the story behind that dear woman, she shared it here, all kinds of things. When I met her, the devil was almost destroying her life. Had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby. She shared her testimony here supernaturally that devil of fiber came out the way a woman gives birth it came out like that without surgery and people were saying ah uh, can you marry time has gone time has gone nonsense i prayed for the card and to the shame of the devil we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of may <laughs> hallelujah brothers and sisters your limitation is self-imposed. Satan is a deceiver. He comes to you and says, but can they really hear your voice? We are going to pray. The only prayer I want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say, Lord, I lift my faith. I'm ready to respond based on my conviction. Lift your voice and begin to pray. have a part to play I 
I lift up that wall of unbelief. Please pray, pray. You are able. Are you praying? sense the anointing of the spirit i'd like you to mention everything that must live tonight listen please just follow these instructions i told you your response is where your faith is there are things that should go don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet Mountain of financial hardship. Mountain of cancer. Mountain of mediocrity. Second Oh, you must go, you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say after me tonight. In the name of Jesus. The faith of God is at work in me. I have the faith to receive. I have the faith to believe. I have the faith to respond. Please listen. Do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4? Don't turn there. The Bible says they went to a gate called Beautiful. Please let me sit down, sir. Watch this. It says they saw a man who had been there. And he, he, he called on them for arms. And he thought they were going to give him arms. Peter and John. And he, they said silver and gold have i none he said but such as i have listen listen i give unto you what did he have he said in the name of jesus rise up and walk the man was there sit down he was nothing happened why response did he believe peter yes did he get a miracle no why he, he could not respond and the bible says when peter saw him he said who taught you faith he held his hand and said respond 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 and the bible says peter held his hand and he leaping stood. the power of god is released at the point of response not before never before at the point of response when i began to minister here the lord was speaking to my spirit who gave me a guarantee that the power of god will move but as i began to speak I put pressure. It's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not. God will not just get up and act. Listen. It was God that put this miracle service. You're leaving your house to come. is enough response already. Are you listening to me? You're going to say, Lord, I put pressure on your integrity. You asked us to come. We have come. Lift your voice and pray. Don't be afraid of saying it. Pray. Lord, you ask us to come. You are the one who anointed this meeting. 
to be a miracle service now oh god we are here put pressure on his integrity we have come oh god that you prove yourself Shake it up, Baba 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 Shake it up, Raska Baba Baba Baba. We have come. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Now keep standing, everybody. Before we continue, there are people here. I don't want you to waste your time, and I don't want to waste your time. There are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the bible says this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life he said and that life is in his son he says he who has the son has that life please we're out of time we have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of god i have heard your word i have been struggling with this thing but tonight, I truly want to dedicate everything, my all to Jesus Christ. Or you are saying, man of God, I have come out for an altar call before. But for some reason, honestly, the pressures of life have pushed me and I need to make my way straight with the Lord. I'm tired of where I am. Those two categories of people, inside and outside, I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now. God bless you quickly please I'll count just one to five if the Holy Ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one two run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to Jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me God bless you. Run to Jesus. Oh, win that war. Win that war tonight. This is an issue of your destiny. Koinonia, can you appreciate them? This is a harvest for the King of Glory. You're saying, Lord, I'm tired of living my life my own way, mismanaging my life. On this Easter Friday, I give everything to you. Keep coming. You are saying, Lord, Easter Friday, you died. For God so loved me. He died for me. I'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling. There are still people outside. Please run and catch up quickly. Quickly. As the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and say, join them. Make your way quickly. You are saying, Lord, I'm tired. Tired of habits. Tired of addictions. Run to the cross. Come running, come running, come running to the mercy seat. Keep coming. Hallelujah. All of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pitching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others god is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me i'm not gonna let you go i'm not gonna let you sleep away No man condemns you. The mercy, the 
mercy. at me all of you in front some of you are crying i don't care what you have done this one decision remember jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well i don't know what you are talking about but i've been crucified with christ he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn you go and sin no more lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood the power of mercy you just sing there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as i pray for them hallelujah listen brothers and sisters jesus can change your life don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back there is power in the blood of jesus say after me lord jesus from the depth of your heart say it again lord jesus i believe in you and this night i surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions i surrender it to you i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that from today i'm no longer a sinner i've been crucified with christ and i have his life right now jesus has paid the price i receive his life and i declare that i'm a new creation the old has gone i begin a new journey satan you no longer have any accusation against me i pray for you keep your hands lifted father on this good friday we present these souls as trophies to you this is a response to what jesus did oh receive these souls koinonia present these souls as trophies of victory trophies of victory this is the sacrifice the rewards of the sacrifice hallelujah i pray for you i declare that your sins are forgiven and the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses i don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty cloth in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of jesus christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of jesus now listen i want you to do this real fast so you join us i'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah i'd like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn. They'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service. Please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening. God bless you. Every other person begin to pray in the spirit. Rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit. And say, Lord, my time for visitation is here. I won't give up. No, I won't give up. I'll keep pressing on till my answer comes. I won't give up, Lord. I won't give up. I'll keep holding on 
Until my change comes Lord I won't give up Lord I won't give up I keep holding on Till my answer comes I won't give up Lord I won't give up I keep pressing on until my change comes please write your prayer requests very quickly and submit them let's do it quickly please one minute everybody if you have the prayer request of of i understand that koinonia is being streamed live right now can we honor god for that yes it's been streamed live we appreciate the media for their creativity and for all our online people we love you the same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ so please quickly quickly please your prayer request listen for those of us who are just coming I I don't want you to think this is some ritual believe me God answers prayers here God gave us a revelation hallelujah and the revelation was the revelation of Hezekiah hallelujah when he took the threat letter and the bible says he put it before the lord and said lord behold their threatenings so please write it very quickly and then ushers let's be very fast please help some people with papers next time maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards Leave her. John, leave her. Whatever she wants to do, just let her do. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Please, quickly, your loved ones, please make sure the online community participate. There's a God that answers prayers here. Remember, we spoke about faith. Those outside, ushers, help them. If I were you, I would begin to prophesy over my request. And say, I wrote you because you must live my life or you must come into my life. Hallelujah. Now please begin to pass your request very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. My goodness. I tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place. That's why I'm saying we should hurry up. We feel the rain of your love. We see the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. See the rain of your love, feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. So let it rain, let it rain. Would you open the floodgates of heaven?
please pass the prayer request very quickly once we start we're just going to move um let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then um, we'll be able to minister to people no matter what your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen we had an encounter um we just returned from ekiti state it's a lovely place and um, listen something really happened as they picked us from the airport in Elorin to Ekiti we passed a small village please listen a small village the border between Kwara state and Ekiti state and I saw one of the most miraculous things in my life I saw the obituaries of people listen 132 years 120 years it's like nobody died except they were 100 and something and in my mind i was saying guinness book of record has been lying to us for long and the, the interesting part of it listen is that the people they are not on glasses their dentitions are still exact they don't use crutches they are working firm one of them was a senior apostle that died last year 132 serving in the ministry alive and doing well when i saw those obituaries i said there must be a grace for longevity there, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity and i told the guys i said when we're coming back we're stopping here you can trust me oh the law of honor as soon as we got there we stopped and we came out we went to the women they could not understand english please quickly with a request and we told them we said we are pastors we went to minister in equity and we are going back to the north but we discerned that there is a special anointing a strange grace for longevity and we want them to release upon us and then a lot of things happened that i may not say here and then they took us to one old man and the man just sat on his chair when we went they interpreted and they told him we came to receive that unction for longevity the man looked at us he said we should all kneel down and we got down on our knees and this guy began to pray and prophesy he's on record i'm sure maybe one of these days we'll play he was in yoruba i didn't care what he was saying Ejimi. all i know is that he was speaking a language and my spirit was receiving it this guy kept prophesying releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us i said that's right i knew that there's no mistake about this the moment we finished with him honored him so the seed into his life appreciated all the people we were on our way going back to the car and i felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women i went back to thank them and i saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife ah. when they said that I said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said you follow her we followed her into a room she just opened the door and i saw pictures from one side to the other she started showing me the pictures i thought it was the wife of the man when he was in his old age you know like ketura that was the one and only woman he married that means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something alive these guys can bear me witness no glasses no crutches no nothing i said what kind of grace is this brothers and sisters there are mysteries have you've heard me say this thing and when we finished before we finished talking we all got down on our knees and we told the woman she first started singing a song i don't know what it was i don't care what it was this woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit and do you know i was i don't know if i was sharing with them i felt as if they put a crown on my head that's how as i was feeling i knew i got this thing immediately she got it i told her i said let's snap i held her hands and we got to the place we'll show you the video and we snapped and i said i'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete 
can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah i mean, i was just looking i was looking to empty everything i had i said what kind of grace is this we went to minister in a university called Afe babalola university the man himself is 86 years alive and doing well in those regions if you are 80 years you are still a child believe me then when we were returning i saw the shock of my life 141 years one how many 41 i saw the obituary he just died 141 I got it. Let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life. No. See, listen. If you don't believe in transference of grace, you will die young. Don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating. I didn't see any hospital around there. I just saw a church. And people, if you can be 190 and not be able to talk, but you are 141. The guy 132 was still serving as a man of God. You are cooking by yourself and you died and left the wife. The, the mama tapped me. In this place, once you are 60 years, you hold crutches. What cause is that? I always believed it, but now that I've seen it, ah, there's that song that says, my eyes have seen. Don't play it. My eyes have seen it. There are many strange things that will fall today. Listen, if you care, you can receive. If you don't, when we were coming, we were in the plane, and the plane was bouncing like a football. I just remember that old woman. I said, plane, you are joking. I'm surrounded by too many mysteries. Please believe me. Hallelujah. 86 years, still a lecturer. 89 years still a lecturer alive 100 and something years you see the women as if they are 50 something but some of them are in their 90s 80s hundreds that's grace brothers it's not about anybody praying for longevity there is an anointing that comes upon territories and tonight in the course of the meeting is when it's time to pray that please receive it we need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom pray and say lord my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families altars that have tied the destinies of men down i'm going to pray i tell you i sense a heavy anointing please the moment that happens i like you not don't just fall and stand up begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of god father your word says upon mount zion there shall be deliverance it says there shall be holiness and it said the sons of jacob shall receive their possessions therefore i pray every spirit every altar every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three I command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire 
is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what i hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand leave the drums just lift your right hand this don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction i see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted shepa baba kata altars 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 right now shake it, 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 it. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. in the name of the lord jesus bring them out those strange altars strange altars hallelujah lift your hands the lord is saying he is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now it's changing right now it's changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three it's like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them
them go now. Let them go now. Let them go now. My dear, tap that lady for me. Yes, that lady nodding. An angel is touching you. He's bringing a miracle for you right now. That's what I see. I see like cold sensation coming to your head. A miracle. And as it's happening to her, may it happen to you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your hands and begin to pray over your request. Let it rain. Please pray. Go ahead and just prophesy and say, Lord, this marks the end of it. The Bible says, believe in the Lord your God. Pray, pray. Don't look at me. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we turn. Go ahead and pray. Lord, my request is turned into a testimony. I must testify by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Standing upon the eternal counsel of God, the hand of the Lord itself will bring this to pass. The burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. Are not angels ministry spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place. In the name of Jesus, we command the foundations of the earth. We command the firmaments. We command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request. We lift every burden placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of God's spirit. And we set these ones free in the name of Jesus, mighty and everlasting God, standing upon your promise to us, upon this altar, the heavenly portals opened in this place. We command a performance of the requests, the desires placed here tonight. In the name of Jesus, we decree the heavens answer speedily. Everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb, receive in the name of Jesus. Promotion from on high, receive in the name of Jesus. An end to demonic oppression, it happens now in the name of Jesus. Blind eyes open. Deaf ears open. Destinies moved forward. In the name of Jesus. Satanic burdens removed. In the name of Jesus. We thank you Lord because speedily. According to the seasons of life. They receive a performance. In the matchless name of Jesus we decree. Amen Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet. And receive the prophecy you can. I saw a spirit. And, and I'm praying for the students now. Please listen. When I was outside ministering, I saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names. I pray for everyone here. The kind of performance you have never seen, receive it in the name of Jesus. Shake it, kappa. Shake it, the kind of performance I pray from the depth of my heart the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus the grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight Step into a new dimension of favor. Step into a new dimension of favor. Every direction you have been praying 
and asking the Lord to give you between now and next Friday receive that direction receive that direction I want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of Jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of Jesus Christ everything that has died in your hands I command it to come back alive in the name of Jesus Christ now I want to pray for you father that old Baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive I pray for you please receive it me too I received it from the depth of my heart Lord you know that I wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of Jesus hear me the force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it all let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story in 2007 i remember at that time i went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story i went to collect a loan from the bank we had done everything and then when it was now time for them to give me the loan they embarrassed me i was humiliated the same people who were helping me it was as if a charm came upon them and i looked at that person and i vowed that till i die till i go to be with the lord i will not collect loan from anybody living or dead i made that determination from the depth of my heart i said lord if you cannot honor me let me die like that i pray for someone here see listen if doors are closing against you it's demonic don't ever say it's because i don't know so 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 bad. if if the person knew me it's a lie there is a man too the bible says everyone loved esther who looked at her like a garment you can wear it i pray that honor that brings receptivity receive it right now oh come on your amen is not loud enough receive it right now hallelujah the bible says you shall be as a delightsome land you know what a delightsome land is well desired in other words at any point you are seen you are invited i don't know who has disqualified you but i pray for you 
they may use your background they may use whatever let grace qualify you tonight let grace qualify you tonight koinonia i pray for you honor that you have never seen in your life from even people who can give birth to you begin to receive it strange honor in high places strange honor in high places in the name of jesus wave your hands and give god all the praise thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus whatever you have started listen something just came in my heart whatever you have started that ended prematurely because this what i'm there is an anointing for what i'm telling you whatever you start i don't care what it is whether it is relationship or whatever and it ended but not by god we put life back to it right now i say it again whatever you started that ended but not by god by a manipulation of darkness it jacks back to life right now in the name of jesus hallelujah give god praise my goodness i wish we had time i wish we had time dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye